Stuart, obviously a difficult start to the season on the pitch. Could you just tell us a little bit about your feelings and emotions after the first nine games? Yeah, I think it's 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 plain to see it's been a, it's been a challenging start. Um, not completely unexpected, you know. I think the the way the fixtures fell, it was always going to be difficult. But but that said as well, you know, we've earned the right to be in this league, so you know we should expect um, some better results. You know, we can't go into games writing them off as oh we've got no chance in that game, or else there's no point fighting as hard to get in this league if if that's going to be our mentality. But yeah, it's been a tough start. Obviously, Saturday against Chelsea was. Um, you know, unacceptable. You know, and and we have to own that. You know, that's that's on, that's on us as a, as a club and everyone within the club. Um, that that was unacceptable. And you know, you know, we're not we've not come to this league to be tourists and swapping shirts with, you know, other players and all that sort of stuff. It, we're here to show that we can stay in this league and compete. We've invested heavily in the squad, heavily in the infrastructure, heavily in the staff, to give ourselves the best opportunity to fight to stay in this league now. That doesn't give us the right to stay in this league because it's that's why it's the hardest league in the world right but um you know we know that we can do better and it's but for us now it's less talking it's more actions we need to back this up and we need to we know we need to put some big performances in and obviously the club has come under fire from supporters media for recent results and performances just give us your um reaction to some of the criticism maybe unjust criticism that's um come our way yeah, I mean, listen, when you lose games, you get criticised and, and that's a fact of life. And, you know, for example, after Saturday, I don't know what was said, but I, I'm, I can guess it was quite unpleasant and deservedly so, because we all deserve whatever we got um, for that. But where I do struggle with is is some of the stuff that has been said about the club is just is, is not factually correct. And, you know, we haven't had a go. We've not spent, you know, we're 11th highest spenders in Europe. Um, we don't deserve to be in the Premier League. Well, I'd say that's pretty disrespectful to our 22,000 season ticket holders and the history of this club. You know, we were a member, founder of the Premier League back in 1992. We've been in European competition. Um, we've got a training ground, which I would argue is now probably in the top 10 training grounds in, in the whole country. Uh, we've got a thriving youth academy. The work we do within our CSF um, is outstanding. So for anyone to say that we don't deserve to be at this level is wrong. For people to say that we've given up and we've, um, you know, we're accepted relegation already as well, I, I can't accept that. You know, everyone at this club works too hard um, to achieve that, and I think it's, um, yeah, that hurts to be honest. And you know, it was uh, I'd heard enough and said um, that I feel I want to come out and say something because you know I don't believe in being bullied and sitting in the corner while people are throwing punches and insults at us. It's like, it's time to fight back. And, you know, because some of the people and some of the stuff that has been said is from people who they'd never get a job here. They wouldn't have the ability to work at, uh, at this level, would never be able to step on the pitch for this club because they're not good enough. And so when they're chucking slang and, and comments around and, and some of the things that they say about our club, uh, which is ultimately then they're talking about our owners and our fan bases, no, we can't just we can't sit there and take that. We've got to swing back and we've got to we've got to show our teeth a little bit. And ultimately, it's about performing and getting results on the pitch. I know if we lose, we we will keep getting hammered and we'll feed that narrative. We've got to change that and we need to own that. But at the same time, we can't just sit here getting beaten up. We've got to say something. And in terms of our summer recruitment, obviously lots of players came into the club over those months. Could you just tell us your overall assessment of how those players have settled into the team? I, mean, I think it's too early to tell as well. You know, it's it's been a tough start for everyone. So, I mean, it'd be unfair to judge players. I think some have settled in a little bit quicker than others, for sure. I think all of them have shown glimpses of of what they can be. Uh, but I also think we need to remember, you know, there's lots of young players. Take like Josh Sargent, he's 21. You know, um, Christoph Solis, he's 19. Brandon Williams is 20. Billy, 19. These are young players as well. So, you know, they they'll need time, and you know, a lot of foreign boys take time to adapt into um, into the Premier League, which is unforgiving. We know, um, but that's our way, and you know, we need to back them, and, and certainly inside we are backing them, and they need they need patience and support now, not finger pointing. You know, it's the same as, you know. People talking about the head coach position or whatever. Oh, you know, does Farker need to go? Has he got a job to save? You know, game to save his job, two jobs. Like, what? You know, we've got 300 people who work in this organisation and this football club, and you know, we've got 11 players who, who play every game. We've got a squad of 20. It's like, it's like, well, 
no, we all have to own this. We're all responsible for this. This isn't down to one man. It's down to everyone from the board all the way through to the supporters. You know, we can all be better. I think if anyone says they've been perfect this season, then, you know, they'll be lying. And, you know, so we've all got to get better. And it's, yeah, too many times it's about one person. And likewise, when you win, it shouldn't be about one person. You know, we won the league last year with 97 points. And, you know, Daniel quite rightly gets incredible plaudits for that. Um, but also we had a quite a good team and, you know, we had pretty good staff and, you know, everyone played a part in that success. But then likewise now, unfortunately, when you're sat in a head coach chair, you get a lot of um, stick and flack because you're almost a public figure. And, and I understand that. But it's also, well, it's not all down to one man when it's going wrong. We all have to own it. And, you know, ultimately I'm the one who sits at the top of the organisation from the football side of the business. So, you know, ultimately the buck stops with me. So, you know, now's a time when we need to get behind people. We know we've got enough quality to be competitive at this level. We know we've got good staff, a good coach, great environment, fantastic supporters, great facilities. It's like, no, come on, now we need to put it all together for sure because, you know, we, we've definitely got no excuses um, on why we can't be a lot better and competitive. doesn't mean we stay up, but we should certainly have enough that we can be a lot more competitive in this league than what we're currently showing. And obviously looking ahead, we've only got two points from nine games so far, so every game coming up is vitally important. So how important looking straight ahead this weekend against Leeds is a positive performance on the pitch from the team and obviously a positive result, but also a positive performance um, in the stands from the supporters in terms of getting behind the team? Yeah, now is when we need everyone, you know, and listen, we need to put a performance in to encourage the supporters. I, I get that. That's on us. That's not on, on them. But also we need the supporters to make this a good atmosphere to play and we need them to back the players. We're in a difficult moment, let's not kid ourselves here. You know, and at times like this, people, players need support. We don't need the supporters when we're 4-0 up in a game. They could go home then. It, we, we, you know, we showed that last season in the Championship. We won it with no supporters here um, because we're just winning every week. And it's like we don't need the fans to get us over the line. But times like Sunday, we do, you know, and we've got a young team and we've got a team who yeah, needs help from all corners. and. The supporters are massive for that. You know, let's not sit here and go, oh, we just got outsung by two and a half thousand Leeds fans because they will come and support their team from the first minutes to the last. Ours need to do the same. And if at the end they're not happy with what they've seen, not a problem. They can say whatever they need to say and, and that's fine. That's their right and we fully respect that. But support the players, please. They need, they need the fans, you know, and this is a time when as a club you come together not oh, it's us and them, it's like, no, we need to sort this out. And the fans can play a huge part in that.